so so there's this app right and it's called Scrivener if you know it already you and you've used it you tend to adore it and you tend to be a writer of uh, novels or of non-fiction books long prose works I, I love Scrivener for all of that I mean I suppose officially properly correctly because it has so many of these tremendously useful features for that type of writing but really it's mostly because Scrivener is somehow this deeply enjoyable app why is one app enjoyable and another isn't but I mean you best you type into be Scrivener Microsoft Word anyway Scrivener it's got this book writing lark nailed down but there is a second side to the app, a, I think much lesser known twin side. I mean, it's not like it's a secret. It's not like the makers don't tell you until you're ready, until you qualify. And yet somehow I believe you can easily miss that Scrivener is also very good for script writing. Or at least certainly I missed it. Okay, I mean, if you are considering uh, Final Draft or Highland 2 or is it pronounced Celtex or Celtex? Both of those. Then there are reasons to at least consider Scrivener instead. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, it's for writers like you and me who use and obviously who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because, you know, there's just always so much to talk about, isn't there? Including this time my favorite writing topic which is script writing script writing is me script writing is it's my main purpose in life but it isn't scriveners i was using scrivener for at least two years maybe more before i even knew that it had this script writing side to it and now of course i don't understand how i kept not knowing about it i mean open the scrivener app and it tells you it does script writing. It tells you right there. Actually, all right, let's try to be nice to me for a minute. This could actually be a reason that I kept missing it. Because if you are already writing a document and you open the document and Scrivener opens with it, well, the document is what you see first. It opens with that and it skips over this whole screen. Look, I'm going to stick with that. that. That's why I missed it. Um, I should say, by the way, just thinking more sensibly, um, if you do open Scrivener and you do get your last document open instead of this window that lets you choose script writing, well, you can just close the window, close the document, and this window will reappear. Yeah. Uh, click on script writing, and then there are these seven different script templates. But far the most important, by far the most important template here is the one that I did notice when I finally cottoned onto this, and actually it's the one I consider to be the, the right script format it's called screenplay here and you know given the name that is clearly the layout the template for a film script but actually it's also used for most television drama which is you know where my heart lies um if it's a tv show that are, used to be on what we would call prime time or actually if it's streaming over any of the services available the original script was written in this layout in this format probably not in scrivener actually but certainly this format. Uh, just for completeness, sitcoms as well. There is a version of this, but that's another story. And for now, okay, let's do this. We've got Scrivener. We've got that screenplay template. We've got the makings. We're good to go. We are good to see what is the point of a script writing app at all? Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, one thing. Uh, leap back a bit. What I'm about to show you is how you start a script in Scrivener. You know when you come in the front door and you click on that script writing lock and you choose the template? Fine. You could very well have already opened a new blank Scrivener document and then thought, oh, actually, no, this should be a script. Or, at least according to the makers anyway, you could be, for example, 30,000 words into your novel and suddenly wondering whether the next chapter should be a script. Short answer, no, of course it shouldn't. Longer answer, you're the writer. Do it any way you think. And you can do this. You can switch from text to script in Scrivener. I, I can't conceive of a reason why I'd suddenly pop a script in the middle of a book. But, you know, whether you're midway through a novel or not, or whether you have just opened up and it's totally blank and you haven't started yet, you can switch then from 
uh, into script writing mode. You do it by pressing Command 8. Uh, or you can choose the format menu and then script writing and then whatever the, the, the top entry in the list is. I mean, it's most likely screenplay, but if you last used the BBC Radio format, for example, you may say that. And if that's what you want, that's what you choose. Uh, this menu and the Command 8 thing, they're a toggle. You use them to turn on script writing mode, you use them to turn off script writing mode, or as Scrivener calls it, go into uh, standard writing mode or something like you switch back and forth with command eight all the time if you were going to swap back and forth now scrivener opens it up with this a a lot actually an explanation at the top that explanation is the first thing that you see which is very very handy actually but it's obviously it's the last thing you want your readers or your ultimate audience to even know is there so this is not actually part of your script not really part of your your document your manuscript instead it's a section here at the top of the binder the, if you know scrivener you know the binder it's a key part of the scrivener app a crucial part of what scrivener does for us and actually i don't believe any other script writing app has it you know it holds your script yeah but also notes like this explanation uh, you could have previous drafts in there, I suppose, if you want. Discarded scenes, you're not fully entirely sure you actually want to discard yet. And, and also research, lots of research. You can drag website addresses, websites in, PDFs, audio, video, anything into that binder, and you have it there in your script forever, but only you have it. Your ultimate reader or audience never sees any of it. They never know any of it's there. They only see your writing. The binder is key to what makes Scrivener special, I think. Uh, but for now, skim through the explanation. Yes, all very nice. And then click on Scene in the binder, and away off you go, writing. It's no longer the rule necessarily, but you can, and I tend to start a script with the words fade in. Type the letter F, and if you haven't done anything else in this document, hit Return to accept that, then Hit return again to get the next line. I'm not going to go line by line. You're just looking at me oddly there, but yeah. Hit return once more, okay? And you call up this thing, Scrivener's list of script elements. Uh, fade in is, is a part, is an element of a script, but m more common elements are scene headings, character name, uh, dialogue, all of this lovely stuff that makes scripts gorgeous, yeah? Scene heading, and now if you type the letters I or E, Sounds like it's going to be a Sesame Street script, doesn't it? Um, then Scrivener offers int for interior, x for exterior. It will offer other things, actually, and surprisingly, not all of them are useful. Uh, for instance, typing i, uh, well, good. It also offers you the combined int x, which is fine. But if you typed e for exterior, then as well as x, it also offers you e for evening, and that's just wrong. Yeah, at this point in the scene heading, at the start of the scene heading line, evening is wrong. Scene headings are always and invariably, they start with first into X, then where the scene is set, William's office, and then some indication of the time. Right? Now, the most common things are day or night and Scrivener. Yep, yeah, they will offer those as soon as you type D or N. And you can do evening here. E, evening, afternoon, morning, uh, you could do 10 past 9 if you want, whatever it is, it's time and you finish the scene heading line with that and you hit return. A scene heading is almost always going to be followed by you going into, well it's into the scene itself. It could be speaking, it could be a character's name, it comes up first. Uh, it could be direction, could be action. The thing it won't ever be is one scene heading will never be followed immediately by another scene heading. And actually, really, the most likely thing to follow any given scene heading on average is some description, sometimes called action, which actually is what Scrivener calls it. Uh, you know, this bit is the, it's the very short prose description of what in the world is going on in this scene. And since it is by far the most likely thing to follow a screen heading, well, Scrivener helps us out here. Scrivener presumes that's what you want, and it switches from scene heading to action automatically. You don't need to keep hitting return till you get that menu that includes action, although you could. You just hit return after scene heading, it's gone to action, you get on with the writing. However, 
the most likely thing to follow one paragraph paragraph of description is probably another paragraph of description. So Scrivener, you can't really guess, it just keeps you in this action mode, keeps you using this action script element until you say no. And you can say no, guess what, by hitting return a couple of times and you get that menu that offers you all the script elements, the scene heading, the action, the character and, and, and so on. Um, Scrivener, it feels to me like Scrivener's kind of itching to get into the dialogue, although that might actually just be projection because that's what I am. Uh, there is a faster shortcut for this rather than return menu, return menu. Rather than, in fact, uh, what would it be? Return, return, select a character, then hit return. What you said, you've written some description, hit return to get a new line and then press the tab key. This switches to the character element. Write your character's name and it appears centered and in all caps, just as it should. Press return again after that character name and as Scrivener, a pretty good guess here that you want to write that character's dialogue. So now, if you care to look at the bottom right of the screen, for me, bottom right of the Scrivener screen, as you press return after the character name, you can see character changes. It changes to dialogue. And dialogue you type, it's not centered, it's uh, indented on the page, it's a block in the middle, uh, again, as it should be. Um, it isn't quite 100% true though, that every character name like this, centered like this, is always followed by dialogue. I mean, well, it is actually, there is always dialogue, but um, there might also just before that, there's no dialogue, what's the point of the character's name? Yeah, uh, there might be one more thing that slips in there first. I mean, it can be. There are these things called Rileys, or, or properly known as parentheticals. It's, uh, you write the character name, hit return, then hit tab again, and it inserts, insets, uh, it uh, inserts opening and closing brackets and insets them slightly too, so that they are centered under the character name. And here is where, if you absolutely must, you would put the word Riley or any parenthetical thing. I mean, you can hear my voice, can't you? I'm not a fan of these. I mean, I use them too, but I use them so sparingly. Uh, a Riley or a parenthetical, it, frankly, it's usually the writer telling the actor something incredibly obvious and just so irritating that the actor, well, they won't read it. They're into their character. They are working your dialogue and absorbing your work and your script should have got them to the point where they will say the line wryly if that's really what you want. Anyway, I, I have a hobby horse uh, just over there. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do that later. If you use a wryly parenthetical, yeah, type it then, hit return, don't bother, back it's, it's kind of dealt with, hit return, and you now you're back into the dialogue where we belong. Knock yourself out. Have the greatest of times writing dialogue. And really, that's it for scripts. You're done. Scene heading, description or action, very short. Character name, Riley, and dialogue, right? You need nothing more to make me happy, really. Okay, um, some studios, right, do require you to end every scene with the words cut to, which is totally pointless, but there you go. If you must, hit return until you get that menu up again. Choose transition, start typing cut to, and let Scrivener auto complete the rest for you. Cut to, fade out, they're all in this transition element. Once you're deep into your script, though, all of this still applies to switching of elements. All of this works. Uh, in fact, it works the same way as scene headings, action, character, dialogue, all of this stuff, all of this lovely stuff. You go through it the same way, tabs and returns, but it also gets faster. And this is important. Scriv you know Scrivener already auto completes when you start to write int or ext, but now it's learned what you are writing in this particular script. Uh, type I for int, fine, hit return, accepts it. And then type, um, in this example, I am the letter W, and look, Scrivener offers William's office, just because I've already used it in this script. Okay. Uh, similarly, actually, if we go down and start to type a character name, well, then Scrivener offers to also complete that from the list of characters you have typed so far that you've used so far in this particular script, doesn't carry over from other ones. Um, actually, one more thing. Rather than all this constant hitting of return and clicking to select from the menu of script elements, you can fortunately do this. Hold down the command and shift keys 
and then type the letter Y. I do not know why it's the letter Y, cannot guess. But that, what that does is it calls up that same menu script elements, but just from the bottom of the screen, not in a kind of pop-up. And right, that doesn't sound like a, a big difference. I mean, it's the same list in a different place, but it has an extra advantage. When you do it this way, that list, each entry in that list has a letter next to it, has a shortcut. So anywhere in your script, hit return, start a new line, press command shift Y, then for example, tap the letter C and you instantly, you switch to writing a character's name. Love it. Now, if you don't happen to have written scripts before, I think everything I've just described sounds a bit tedious, really. I mean, calling up menus, typing the first letter of this word or that sentence or that description, touch tabbing, short cookies, and, and so often hitting return. Just try doing any of it in Word or even Pages, for example. You can do it there. You can do it in those word processors. Each of these script elements, it's got specific margins on the page. Some are in all capitals, some are centered. You can set up all of that uh, with styles in Word or Pages. You still have to set them all up. You still have to switch between them. So there's no advantage there. And I don't know what the exact margin settings are for you when you're setting these up, I suppose. Now, I know you can find them online. I've seen them online, just can't remember them. Um, and actually, uh, think about it. Using styles, you can even set it up. So, you know, that thing of you hit the scene, you write scene heading, hit return, and it switches to description or action. You can do that in styles, in words and pages. So it sounds the same. Uh, once you've gone through all the setting up, which is very fiddly that you have to do in Word and Pages, then it sounds all the same. All that setting up, you don't have to do it in Scrivener or Final Draft or any other script writing thing. And that is actually a boom, but you set it up once, you could live with that. It's like you have to keep coming out of the story to remember to switch elements. You can't just tab to be in the character style, for example. I just, I don't believe it ever becomes quite as automatic, as transparent as it does if you're writing in, in a, uh, uh, it's transparent if you're writing in a specific script writing app, it's never transparent in a general purpose word processor. Dedicated script writing apps do this better. There's the second thing, so there are a couple. If this were all easy, right, to do it in Word and whatever, I wouldn't keep being set, sent scripts that are written in Word and look awful. There's an argument the layout doesn't matter, but you and I are writers, plus we're adults. Let's just cut straight to it. That argument is nonsense. Scripts are not formatted in the way they are because there's some arbitrary rule or a club somewhere where the members decided they like it. Scripts are formatted the way they are to do a job. And it is a job that has developed and evolved over more than a hundred years now. And when someone sends me a script where the margins say aren't right, well, yeah, okay, I couldn't tell you how many millimeters out, any, how many pixels out it is, but I instantaneously know it's wrong and therefore I instantaneously know that this writer does not read scripts. Okay, they might be an undiscovered talent, a genius whose sheer wonderment and wonderfulness could buckle the industry and forever transform how scripts are and should be made, but they aren't and they don't and they won't. At least two hobby horses, I've got a posse. Anyway, look, Scrivener, it is just about infinitely better for script writing than Word or Pages. Let's say that. It is, though, far from the only option, but I do think it holds its own. Um, I do wish it also completed a bit more than it does, though. Um, if you're writing an argument between two characters in the final draft script writing uh, word processor, then that app knows which character suggests when. It's this character, then it's that one, then it's this. And that is fantastic because you can get so into the, the heat of the argument. You can just write it faster, what they're saying. You know, it, Scrivener doesn't do that. Other than that one thing though, which does bother me, but it's only one thing. I can't say I have any actual real criticisms of Scrivener as a script writing tool at all. You're not going to get any studio or any producer who uses Scrivener. It just is not widely enough known for that, but they do all read PDFs and Final Draft and Scrivener can make a Final Draft or a PDF at any time you like.
If you've already got Scrivener, then definitely fine, go right to it. Script writing in this app is good, and it's right there, and Scrivener overall, it is superb, isn't it? I mean, and if you haven't already got Scrivener, if you haven't already experienced the superbness of it, well, the app is still superb, you've just got that to look forward to, and it has the benefit that it is substantially cheaper than most script writing alternatives. Scrivener costs £47, call it $60, where to buy Final Draft new is about four times as much as that. Uh, if you're upgrading from an older version of Final Draft, well then the, the, latest, the latest upgrade price, it's still about 50% more than Scrivener on average. Only if you do already have an old version of Final Draft, stick with that. There isn't a benefit to switching to Scrivener for script writing, not unless you're also going to use Scrivener for all of its tremendous book features. Uh, Final Draft, actually, it does want you to use it to write prose in there in Final Draft itself as well as scripts, but it's aimed at you writing short treatments. You wouldn't write a novel or long form, long form prose in Final Draft, nor would you in Highland 2. Highland 2 is another script writing app, actually costs around the same as Scrivener, and it's a very modern, very slick screenwriting app developed by an actual screenwriter. I do have just one hesitation uh, over screenwriting in Scrivener, and it's this, how to explain this. It, it might just be for me. Scrivener is utterly superb, right, when you're writing something like a book uh, that has chapters, because, uh, you know, you can start the book, you could write top to bottom in one go, you can nip around between them, last chapter first, next chapter 40, I don't know. And you can also look at it all in order, so you can look at just the current chapter, please, or you can hide everything except, say, chapters 5 and 19, when you want to see how something you've written has paid off for it. You can slice away in Scrivener for novels. Scripts don't have chapters, they have scenes. And scenes are not as tidy as chapters. Um, if I have characters arguing, say, as they walk from the bedroom, through the kitchen, and out into the garden, well, that's one row. It's one part of the story, but it's three scenes. I don't split up my document into a scrivener, as it's called, for every scene, interior bedroom, interior kitchen, exterior garden. Fine, that's up to me, and it's up to you, and scrivener is never gonna complain about any of this. You write what you need to write. But Scrivener's best features are at their best when you do have everything in distinct chapters or chunks instead of one single straight through script. So I'm conscious that I'm not benefiting from all that Scrivener can give me, not in script writing form. Which I think means as much as I, I would use Scrivener for script writing, I wouldn't swap to it from a screenwriting app that I was already using. I, I'm not going to skip back to it from Final Draft, for example. That research stuff, the binder, that is really tempting. And Scrivener continues to just be this really enjoyable app to write in. But as I have Final Draft, I won't be giving it up for film and TV script writing but actually there's that template isn't there i might very well give up pages and switch to scrivener for radio script writing actually no there's no maybe about it i definitely okay well i learned something there thank you um i should say scrivener for the mac what did i say it's uh for the mac it's 49 dollars or 47 pounds and you can get it from the gorgeously named literature and latte website um there's also scrivener for ipad a separate thing works together but it's a separate purchase it costs twenty dollars on the app store and it too includes all of these script writing features there is actually a whole 58 keys about using scrivener on the ipad but that one's really a 58 keys about um using it for novels and long form writing i think scrivener feels more at home with so um i'd recommend that for seeing what else this great scrivener tool offers you if you don't already know but for now that's script writing on Scrivener and that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now take care of yourself, eh? Write more, preferably scripts, and I'll see you soon.